Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Fish of Hex. My name is Travis. In today's video, I'm going to give you some tips and talk about how you can actually be successful here in the saltwater hobby. Now, there are many different degrees of success and it's going to be different for everybody and how they proceed through the hobby. So that means something that I would be trying to strive for and what I consider to be successful could be totally different than what you as a new hobbyist just starting out are looking to do. So just keep that in mind as we move through this video. All right, so my first tip would be take the time to learn before jumping balls deep into the hobby. And I've seen it countless times. Uh, people email me and say, hey, I bought this piece of equipment. I've got this, 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 this. Um, I don't really know a lot about the hobby, but I got the best of the best. So I'm ready to set everything up. What can we do? And, uh, you know, to come to find out, you just spent about five grand more than you actually needed to uh, be successful, and then you're out that money. So I would recommend that you take the time to learn from other successful hobbyists. Um, just see what they're doing, try to imitate that, and then move forward, and you can try various different reactors, different chemicals, all sorts of stuff. Uh, just be willing to take the time to learn before spending all that money and jumping in. Now for my second tip, which is kind of the opposite of this, is don't spend too much time uh, trying to learn everything before you actually uh, start the hobby. Because I get those emails as well. People are like, hey, I've been studying and learning for about six to eight months now. I don't actually have a tank, but I am getting a list of things together. And uh, you know, I eventually, once I know enough, I wanna go ahead and start. If you're six to eight months in and you have been actively doing research and you haven't started a tank yet, just start the damn tank. There's no reason to keep going. Uh, there's just going to be so much you're going to learn during the process, and you don't want to miss out on that by just trying to learn everything all at once. So, yes, you want to learn before you jump in, but you also don't want to learn everything or attempt to before actually starting. All right, so for my third tip, have realistic expectations of yourself and the progression that you're going to be going through. Now, when it comes to being successful, again, it's going to be different for everybody. Uh, some people come in and say, hey, I'm going to have a fully stocked SPS tank in six months. No one's going to stop me. Uh, kudos to you. And if that happens, great. But for the majority of people who say that and want that so early on in the hobby, it usually doesn't work out. Now, that's not for every case. As I said, a lot of people can make that happen. But for the majority of us, it just doesn't work out that way. So have realistic ex expectations. Say, hey, I'm going to go ahead and have uh, quarantined. I'm going to have clean fish, pest-free tank, and I'm going to have LPS, and it's going to grow. And that's what my goal is for the next uh, six months. And then once I get past that mark, I'm going to start putting in some easy SPS, and I'm going to see how that develops. And again, our, our expectations are going to be along the lines of what we want in the hobby. So just be realistic, understand that it's not going to happen overnight. And if you can accept that, you're going to enjoy the process and the ride a lot more. Okay, moving on to my next tip, and I briefly mentioned it in the previous one. If you wanna be successful and you actually wanna see success, you need to quarantine your damn shit. Everything, your coral, your fish, your inverts, quarantine them. If you don't have the room to quarantine them, then don't be in the hobby. I know that, oh, that's gonna sting. Oh, I, oh, oh dislike to the video, dislike to the video. Tough luck, guys. If you want to be successful, you need to do this. You need to quarantine uh, because you're going to remove 99% uh, of the problems that you're going to have. And, uh, you know, it, they're just going to be gone. You're not going to have to deal with them because you took the time to quarantine these things. So the rule of thumb, if, it plan, if you plan on having it touch your aquarium's water, you need to quarantine it. All right, so for my next tip, which is kind of along the lines of my previous, you want to make sure that you're finding good resources when it comes to finding fish and coral. Uh, you want to be able to see somebody and how transparent they are. If you're trying to buy coral from somebody who's just kind of hiding in the shadows, getting stuff and just trying to get it out as quickly as possible without making sure that they've actively tried to remove pests and went through dipping process, uh, you want to make sure that you can see uh, how these people are uh, taking care of the coral before you buy it. And same thing with fish. Uh, a lot of people say this and, oh man, I, the dislikes are going to come flying in now. My local fish store quarantines my fish before I buy them. That is some bullshit. Local fish stores might keep copper in their system, but there's nobody in the world. And this is from somebody who has sold fish, actively sold fish. There's nobody in this world that is importing fish for the price that they're getting them and then quarantine them for the appropriate amount of time before eventually selling it to you. 
unless they're dr- jacking that price through the roof. So if they buy like a, a $30 hippo tang and they keep it in quarantine for, you know, three, four, five weeks, and then they sell it for $150, $200, yeah, okay, they might do that. But there ain't no joker selling a $70 hippo tang who's quarantining that shit. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, wait, what's that? More dislikes. Oh, well. All right. Well, if you're still here, I would appreciate the thumbs up. Let's move on to some more tips. Now, uh, this is something that I've learned early on, and that is don't buy the cheapest equipment out there. Now, people buy cheap equipment like J-Bow and stuff like that. I personally still use those here in the fish room, and they work just fine. Granted, their manufacturing process has kind of took a shit over the last couple years, but either way, they still work pretty, pretty well for the price. One thing you don't want to do is you just don't want to go out and buy dirt, dirt cheap. I'm talking with no reviews. You just want to get it, get it going, get it in your tank, random stuff off Amazon. Just, just don't buy the cheapest stuff out there. And, uh, you know, one thing that I always do is I'd never buy anything unless it has good reviews or at least decent reviews that I'm willing to take the risk given the price. So just keep that in mind. Don't buy junk, buy something mid range if you're on a budget and then work your way up to having the good stuff, which will eventually come. All right, so for my next tip, make sure you're testing your water at least once per week. You want to get the major stuff, your calcium, alkalinity, your magnesium, your salinity, your temperature. Uh, Those are what you should definitely be testing at least once per week at a bare minimum. If you are kind of moving into the SPS territory, you want to keep an eye on your nitrates and phosphates. Make sure you're not bottoming out so you don't get dyno. You want to make sure you're also not going through the roof and getting cyano and green hair algae. So keeping those in a good range. And, uh, you know, just make sure that you're testing uh, to keep an eye on things. Because, unfortunately, in this hobby, depending on the system you have, sometimes things can go downhill really quickly. And just having a simple magnesium test, which I messed up on. I didn't test for like a month or so. And my magnesium was low and I was having issues with that. You know, if I just tested it and took the time to do that, I could have avoided some issues and possible STN in the tank. All right, so for my next tip, make sure you're not overstocking your tank with fish and you're not overfeeding those fish. One of the things we do early on is we try to get all the cool fish that we've had on our quote-unquote bucket list when we first started, and sometimes our tanks aren't big enough, we don't have enough biological filtration, or our skimmer's just not big enough, and we end up having too many fish, and then you're also feeding those fish, and then you just run into nutrient issues, which a lot of people have, excess uh, nitrates and phosphates and hair algae. A lot of that stuff goes down, or at least back to the basics of having too many fish and overfeeding the tank, and that kind of goes along with the lines of the second part of this uh, tip is don't feed your fish every time you walk by the tank Uh, feed them once per day that's what i do if you want to do you know once or twice a day if with an auto feeder you can you know whatever works just don't overfeed the fish and i try to stay away from uh, dry foods usually because there's so many nutrients and it doesn't take much to really overfeed the tank at that point so just keep that in mind when you're buying fish and feeding them Now, the second part to that is you don't want to buy fish that are not uh, capable of growing their full potential in the current tank that you have. What I mean by that is don't uh, go out and buy a bunch of tanks if you have a 40-gallon tank. Uh, I've made this mistake, not, I guess, to that extent of buying a bunch of them, but I have overstocked a tank with fish that can just grow really big. And especially in the freshwater side of things, especially when you're uh, working with Oscars and fish that just grow really quickly, uh, the tank busters, those kind of fish, they just... You just got to be careful. So if you plan on um, having tangs and stuff and you only have a 30 or 40 gallon tank or a 55 gallon tank, just hold off on them. Uh, You know, maybe just get one if, you know, a small one that doesn't grow like a Vomingi tang, like, you know, two feet. Get one that sticks around that eight to nine inch mark and you don't have to worry about it so much. Uh, Just don't buy fish that are not capable of growing to their full potential in their current tank and save that stuff uh, for uh, your bigger eventually upgraded system. Now, I do want to mention, I'm not officially part of the uh, Tang Police, but I do like messing with people on the forums, and I've done it to a lot of people on Facebook uh, when they're talking about it. I always do the Tang memes. It's just, you know, it's one of my things. Okay, so I'm going to try to do a couple more tips for you guys. Now, one thing I recommend that everybody should do is try to uh, incorporate making money with the hobby, not to the extent that I go when you're selling a ton of stuff like that and just kind of it becomes a business. I'm not saying do that, but I am saying, hey, if you're growing some extra coral in your tank and you got some soft corals or some uh, SPS or something like that, just go ahead and frag it and sell it at a local swap or trade it in at the store for credit. Just do this because what's going to happen is you're going to want these bigger and better things. It's just part of the process uh, in the hobby, and you're going to have to pay for that somehow. So instead of uh, you know going out and spending personal money, Uh, sometimes your significant other might not appreciate that. You can go ahead and save money up through this process to eventually get the things that you want. 
All right, so for my next tip, and damn, every time I say tip, that stupid meme of just the tip just keeps popping in my head. This is one of the downsides of having your mind in the gutter all the time is you can never do normal shit without saying something that's just maybe only I laugh at, but hopefully some of you guys are as bad as me and you laugh about it. But uh, anyways, my next tip is to be humble. One thing that people do, and not only just outside of the hobby, but I see it in the forums I see here on YouTube, everybody who gets this giant massive head because you've seen a little bit of success or you got freaking 10 followers on it on YouTube or Instagram, you start being mean to everybody. You start acting like a prick. You start, I'm a prick by general. I'm in general. I'm not a prick because I want to be a prick. I'm just, it just happens. But you're mean to people and you put people down and you tell them they're not good. And you know, you just feel like you're better than everybody. One thing you need to be in this hobby is humble. Take the compliments, be successful, and then strive to help those that are not. Uh, you'll get a lot farther in this hobby, and people won't think you're such a piece of shit if you just be that way. All right, so, uh, yeah, that's about it for that one. Oh, and just in case you guys are wondering, I have uh, been forced to check that my content or my channel is no longer appropriate for children. Um, who would have thought, huh, right? I mean, I thought I was just moving along, and everybody and their grandmother could have watched it. Um, obviously not, YouTube. Well, guys, that's about it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and hopefully you had a couple laughs along the way. I try to throw in some jokes and have a good time because you think listening to this content is boring? Try making it. It can uh, get very dry and stale uh, pretty quickly. So I try to have some fun with you guys. Hopefully you appreciate it, and I don't scare off too many people. Now, I do get emails and comments saying, oh, I can't watch you with my kids and yada, yada, yada. Guys, it's been four years here on YouTube. Happy, I think November was my fourth year. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Obviously, Fish of Hex is not family movie night friendly. Duh. All right, so I don't want to hear about it anymore. Anyway, uh, if you appreciate the content and what I do for this community, feel free to uh, subscribe and hit the thumbs up button because, you know, I love that instant gratification of thumbs up because it just, you know, my whole day relies on the fact that you guys like my content. All right, so until next time, I'll see you later. Peace.